Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Lately I've been seeing a lot of people selling investment grade boas. I've seen a lot of people discussing about investing in a boa breeding project. But what exactly does it mean to invest in boas? And what kind of a return on investment should you expect to get? That's the topic I'll be discussing in today's episode. So before you go cashing out that 401k and putting all your retirement savings into red tails, be sure to watch this episode. When we think about an investment in the classic sense of the definition of the word, we're talking about a financial return. You expect to get some kind of a financial reward or money in exchange for the investment. And that's basically the, you know, the classical definition of the word investment. And does this apply to BOAS? Well, maybe, maybe not. So when we talk about a return on investment, meaning a financial return, there's really two ways that a financial investment can pay off. The first and the simplest is just that the value of the asset increases over time. So people buy a lot of a certain thing, a certain asset, they hold on to it for a period of time, and then the price goes up, and then they sell the asset, and they get a profit. And this is uh, the, kind of the classic definition of investment. You go, you buy a bar of gold, the price of gold goes up, you sell. Like if you had bought gold back in the 90s at $400 an ounce, you could sell today at close to $2,000 an ounce, make quite a bit of money. Or you might buy Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin goes up, you make a profit on the asset, and you got your money. So pretty straightforward you know of course the things don't always go up in value and that's the risk of getting into that investment but if it works out you just simply hold on to an asset for a period of time and you get your money in return does this apply to boas almost always this does not apply to boas and so most of the assets we're talking about don't require much upkeep keep of any upkeep at all you know basically you're getting that bitcoin putting it in your bitcoin wallet and it's just sitting out there in cyberspace, hopefully going up in value. Or you buy a bunch of gold and you keep the gold in your vault in a secure place so it can't get stolen and the gold goes up. But you don't really have to take care of the gold or feed the gold. It's got very, very low maintenance costs. Boas, of course, have a pretty high maintenance cost. So even if the price of the boa did go up over time, you would be looking at all of the maintenance costs, all of the food, all of the uh, husbandry supplies and care that you have to put into the boa. So you're talking about quite a bit of money going into that. And then the value of most boas just simply does not go up over time. There are some exceptions to this and if you've been following the boa market you've probably noticed that the locality boa market has gone up a lot in the last five to ten years and many types of boas the price on the market has gone up you know three or four fold for example this is a tar humara boa these animals going back five or ten years were in around the two hundred dollar range now the price is you know three or four times that if you can find them uh, and they sell out really fast so in theory, had you bought a bunch of tar humara boas five years ago at $200 each, maybe you could sell them for you know, several times that now. Of course, you have to look at the amount that you've paid to maintain the boas and feed them and house them and care for them. And I, I suspect you probably wouldn't be making any money you know, when you take that into account. And then of course, many boas do go down in price. You know, the classic examples are morph boas, when the morph, a new morph first comes out, you're talking about $10,000 in some cases. And then as people breed them and the morph gets more common, the price goes down until most morph boas settle out at, you know, just a few hundred dollars a piece. So you're really not very likely to make any money just buying boas and holding onto them to sell later. I did have a buddy though who got into locality boas at just the right time, built up a really nice collection and then he actually got out a few years later, you know, much to my disappointment. But the timing was perfect and he did manage to sell his animals, you know, in most cases at uh, several times what he had paid for them. Not including, of course, all of the maintenance costs. Okay, so that definition of investment really doesn't apply to BOAs. But there's another definition of a financial investment. And that is that the investment will create value over time. And a lot of financial investments fall in this category. 
for example, real estate, you might buy a house and you know, this real estate might fit onto the first definition if the value of the house goes up, but the house is gonna return value. You're gonna be living in that house, uh, it's gonna serve as your home, or you're gonna rent it out and you're gonna get rent uh, for someone that lives there and that's the value that it returns. Or you might think of like a tool, like you're a photographer, you have a wedding photography business, you go out, you invest a few thousand dollars in a really nice new camera, and that camera is able to create value in the form of lots of really nice pictures that you can sell to your clients. So even if the camera goes down in value over time, it's creating value and you're getting the return on investment. And this is really where the financial definition of investment applies to BOAs. So we might think of BOAs, of course, as investment because you can breed them. And that's the number one reason why people get into investing in BOAs. They have this idea that they can uh, invest in some really nice breeding stock and they you know raise them up a few years later they're going to be pumping out the babies and it's almost like an ATM machine unfortunately it doesn't usually work out like that and I think most people who are getting into breeding much like many other endeavors they have a much more optimistic picture about their prospects of success than what really turns out in reality. And it's pretty easy to look on paper and think, well, this boa in four years can be having litter sizes of between 15 and 20 babies. Each baby can sell for this much, etc. And they just discount the fact that there's really no sure things in breeding boas. And a lot of times you can do everything right. You can raise them up slowly. You can you know, have great breeding stock and they just don't breed or something happens that's out of your control that interferes with your breeding plants. And when we're talking about breeding boas, it's a pretty long-term project. If you get baby locality boas of most types, you're looking at at least four to five years before they're gonna be ready to breed. And that's a long time. A lot can change in someone's life in four years. So things might interfere with your breeding plans. You might have a change in your living situation, your job, your family life, things like that. And you might have to get out of breeding boas. So unfortunately, a lot of people that set out to breed boas are not successful. And although I don't have any scientific measurement of exactly the percentage of people who set out to breed boas and how many are successful, I would say based on you know a lot of experience I've had over many years now, that probably for every 10 people who set out to breed boas, maybe one of them is successful in that they have a viable litter and they have baby boas you know, at the end of the project or you know, the beginning of their breeding career. So this just means that they have viable boas. And you know, unfortunately, the rest of the people, life just intervenes, they lose interest. There's like a million reasons why uh, you can get out of breeding boas, many of them out of your control, and that's just life. And so a lot of times people just realize how much work it is and how many cages they have to clean and how, much, how many sacrifices they have to make. They can't go on vacation. They have to give up their social life. There's a lot of compromises that boa breeders make. And you know, a lot of people just can't hack it. And you know, it's understandable. It's a, it's a lot of work and there's really no guarantee of success. Okay, so if we say that about 10% of the people that set out to breed boas are successful in having baby boas, that doesn't mean they're successful and get a return on investment because they've invested many, many thousands of dollars into the boas over the years, as well as all the time and all the husbandry supplies and all the sacrifice. You know, they're just getting a little bit of money in return, but it's really not covering nearly what they put into it. So the next thing is how many of the people who are successful breeding boas actually recoup their investment and they get back what they put into it in terms of you know the financial considerations. And I'd say maybe one out of 10. So for every 10 people that are successful having babies, maybe one of them goes on to get a return on investment and actually make some kind of profit out of the endeavor. So you can do the math for every 100 people that set out to become a boa breeder, we're talking about maybe one who's ultimately successful at breeding boas. 
And there's a number of reasons for this, which I've discussed in some of my other videos. But uh, you know, I'll just say one of the main reasons is that breeding boas is not the only thing that you have to do to be a boa breeder. You also have to deal with the uh, human aspect, the marketing and the selling and the shipping to customers and the customer service, things like that. And a lot of people just don't wanna do that. You know, a lot of us got into boas because our people skills really weren't all that good to begin with. So now we have to answer all these emails and phone calls and, you know, try to coordinate shipments and make people happy. And it's just a lot to deal with. And some people just conclude this just isn't worth it. So in a nutshell, I would say that, you know, your odds of being a successful breeder are maybe 1%. Um, you know, for every 100 people that set out, you're talking about one person who's successful. The take home message here is that from a purely financial perspective, BOAs are a really terrible investment. And there are a lot of other ways that are a lot easier and lower risk to invest in like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, real estate, precious metals, et cetera, et cetera, Bitcoin. I'm sure you can think of like 10 other investments that are more likely to make you money than breeding boas. So getting into breeding boas purely for the financial return or largely for the financial return is a really bad idea and likely to end in disaster. That being said, there are a lot of returns on investment that we get from boas that are not financial. And this is the return on investment that the vast majority of us get out of this hobby and the reason why we do this. And so I'm sure that you're familiar with the returns on investment that you can get, the joy and satisfaction that you get out of breeding boas. You know, science, from a scientific perspective, there's a lot you can learn about biology and genetics and natural history from breeding boas. Uh, you know, the locality boas are a great case study in evolutionary biology, looking at how they're adapted to the different environments that they're from. You know, the genetics behind breeding boas, like for example, in morph breeding, you need to understand genetics and you know, Mendel's laws in order to predict the outcomes of the crosses. Um, that's one area where you get a return on investment. These animals are pets, so they provide companionship for their owners. And that could be anything from similar to a dog or cat to more like a tropical fish, more of a hobby animal. And I know some people bond with their boas like they bond with their dogs and cats. Personally, I have a different type of relationship with my dogs and cats. The, to me, they're kind of more like family, where I'm not sure I would call boas a member of my family. But I do enjoy them, their individual personalities. One of the main benefits I get out of them is just the relaxation and the stress relief of handling them and interacting with them. I just think that they're really tranquil animals. And um, every time I pick one up and you know let it slither around, I just feel my stress level going down. You know, some people have said that tropical fish can do the same thing, which is why you can see tropical fish in the waiting rooms of many dentists' offices to you know try to calm people down. But I think if they had a tank full of boas, it would probably do the same thing. You know, provided people aren't scared of snakes, of course. But you know, taking them out and just chilling with them is just a great way of unwinding and forgetting about the troubles of the day. And we you know one of the main benefits I get out of my boa collection. There's also the social aspect of boas. You can meet a lot of people who have a you know like-minded interest in boas. If you join a local reptile club, you can meet a lot of people, make a lot of friends who are into boas. You can meet people online in the different groups, the different forums for boas and Facebook groups and Flickr groups, things like that. Um, it's just a way to connect with other people and to enjoy the company and to enjoy the hobby. Having boas can also pay off as far as connections with your family members. A lot of people do this as a family activity and they take their kids to the reptile show, pick out a new animal, and you know they bond over this so this definitely brings families closer together it's good clean fun it's educational it's enjoyable it's just a great hobby to be in and that really is the main return on investment that the majority of us boa keepers get is just the enjoyment and satisfaction 
of participating in this hobby and continuing the hobby for future generations so we can enjoy these wonderful reptiles. So that's my take on investing in boas. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts on this topic or any perspectives to add, I'd love to hear them. So, you know, please comment below. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.